Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. I'm here at the Westgate Hotel attending Nanosys demonstration for CES 2020 and it's my annual rendezvous with Mr. Jason Hartlove. Hello everyone. So I've lost my voice, but Jason's voice is as boomy as ever. So Jason, can you please give our viewers an update about your Quantum Dot Roadmap? Yeah, sure. So this year, uh, well, I should say last year, 2019, because it's 2020 already, uh, we saw uh, between 7 and 8 million, close to 8 million Quantum Dot TVs shipped out there in the market. Um, and we saw a lot of very interesting new technologies come together with Quantum Dots for the first time. One of those, for example, is Mini LED. So Mini LED backlight together with Quantum Dots are really, really now approaching you know, what we would consider to be the best possible display. So you've got the great color fidelity because your quantum dots, high efficiency, but with the mini LED backlight, you're actually able to get a very uniform, but actually a ton of zones in the backlight for local dimming. So what we have behind us, for example, is TCL 8 series. This is featuring our quantum dot film, but also over 20,000 individual LEDs in over a thousand zones. And so that allows for a lot of control of the backlight brightness. And ultimately that means we can get really, really high contrast ratio and really great black levels. Um, this is an outstanding product, uh, over 80% of BT2020 as well. And that's also important because as we see the quantum dot technology start to take root in the marketplace, it's very clear that the higher BT2020 rating begins now to get into the ability to trigger what's called the HK or Helmholtz Kohlrush effect, which is part of our visual system. And it basically relies on the more saturated the colors are, the more saturated the primaries are, the brighter they appear. So this gives HDR just another dimension uh, of expression for artists. Um, and we're beginning to see a lot of really great tools out there featuring this mini LED backlight system. Very, very bright front of screen brightness, very, very deep blacks, and great color from the quantum dot technology. Besides the TCL 8 series, there is another mini LED display with quantum dot technology on demonstration in your suite. Can you explain that to our viewers? Yeah, so we've got this great uh, monitor. Um, and so this is the uh, PA32UCX uh, uh, from ASUS. And so this monitor has over 90% BT2020 color gamut. Um, I, again, over a thousand zones on a 32 inch size. So the size of each zone now becomes very small. And this enables, again, content creators Perhaps this will be used in studios, for example, and in the creative process and in the editing and post process uh, uh, types of functions. When we have tools like this that can be put in the consumer's hands or in the content creator's hands, that's going to lead to even better quality of video coming out uh, rated or graded to BT2020 standards. And so that's another very exciting product that we see. Again, tremendous brightness, great black levels uh, from the mini LED backlight. Another burning question that some of our viewers have is QD OLED or Quantum Dot OLED. Can you give us an update? Is it happening? Is it just a rumor? Please give us an update. Sure. Well, I, I can say unequivocally it's happening for sure. Um, you know, there was a huge kind of product launch ceremony that included the president of Korea uh, there with a number of people from Samsung Display, including the CEO. And we're working very closely. As uh, many people may know, Samsung is one of our largest investors in Nanosys. Um, and so we are uh, intimately involved with this project. And I can say for sure it's happening. Um, I have personally seen uh, the latest versions of this. I can tell you it is stunningly beautiful. Um, again, because now what we've got is very high contrast ratio because you have the OLED subpixel uh, architecture, right? So each pixel goes on and off individually. But you've got perfect color because now your color is being created by those quantum dots, the very narrow spectral width. So you've got very deep 
saturated reds, greens, and blues, what you wind up with is a set that really starts to show this HK effect, this deep helmholtz kohlrush color saturation effect. And it's just a beautiful thing. Um, the closest thing that I can relate it to that people may have seen in real life is uh, stained glass windows in a church, especially like an old European church, um, where interestingly enough, they actually didn't know at the time, but they were actually making those colors using a form of early metal nanocrystals. Um, so not totally dissimilar from what we use today in making quantum dots. For the benefit of not only our viewers, but also myself, are you able to explain how quantum dot OLED works? Yeah, I mean, just real briefly, um, and again, this is all you know publicly available information. Basically, quantum dots absorb light at a wavelength that's below the emission wavelength of the dot. Right? So we need to excite, for example, a green quantum dot with light that is a deeper, higher energy than the green emission wavelength that's going to come out. So we use blue, for example. We could use ultraviolet just as easily. So we use a blue light to stimulate green quantum dots, and then they emit green light coming out. So they're a perfect color converter. They have close to 100% internal quantum efficiency. Now, what this allows us to do in a case of the QD OLED or QD display technology is we can make an entire display which is all blue OLED pixels, right? Now, that's really key for manufacturability. Um, the small OLED devices are able to actually pattern individual different colors of pixels, red, green, and blue OLED, for example, is what's commonly used in the mobile display. But when you get to the very large panel size, the ability to pattern those individual red, green, blue OLED molecules, it's gone. Many people tried for many years to make that technology work and basically gave up on it. So instead, what we're doing here is we have a uniform field of blue OLED pixels. And then above each pixel that we want to be green, we deposit through an inkjet process a very, very small amount of green quantum dot material. And that absorbs the blue light that comes forward from that OLED, that blue OLED pixel and converts it perfectly into the green color that we want. And then the green comes out to the viewer. And we do the same for red and for blue, we just let the blue come through natively. So what that really means now is that each pixel is in fact OLED, but we're able to make, take advantage of not needing to pattern the OLED molecules. At the same time, we're able to make these very beautiful saturated reds and greens using the quantum dot color conversion layer on top of the blue OLED substrate. Given that blue OLED has shorter lifespan than other colors, is there any concern about burning at all for this technology? Yeah, so I'm not an OLED expert, but I do believe that um, there are ways to manage that if you approach the design uh, knowing full well what you're going to have to deal with in terms of the materials. And so, you know, some of the ways that that can be dealt with, for example, might be multiple layers of emitting material rather than just a single layer of an emitting material that puts less lifetime stress on any given part of the material stack. And there's other circuitry that can be deployed as compensation circuitry and other things as well. So I believe that these issues are gonna be uh, minor or not existent at all as far as the consumer is concerned. Um, but ultimately, again, that's a question better asked to OLED experts. Um, if you wanna talk about quantum dot LEDs, I can tell you a lot about those, so. I think that's all the time we have today because you have another appointment and I have to rush back to the LBCC. But I really appreciate you taking the time out to speak to us and update us on the status of your quantum dot roadmap. And I wish you all the best for the year ahead. Great. Thank you very much, Vincent. Mm -hmm.